Here we go for lesson 6.2 and 6.5. Uh, we're taking a look at arithmetic sequences and series. Uh, there, there's two main types of sequences that we get into. One is arithmetic and the other is geometric. Um, both you have seen in the past. Arithmetics come up as early as Algebra 1. Um, so you get these actually for like three years. So uh, you get these in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Precalculus. Um, so hopefully this will look familiar to you. Uh, but when it comes to arithmetic sequences, simply means we are adding some number to get the next term. So in this case right here, you can see that we are always adding 6 to get the next term, which is what makes it arithmetic. Uh, we refer to that as the common difference. So whatever number is being added to get the next term is your common difference. Uh, we do always look at it as what's being added, never subtracted. So even if the numbers are going down, um, let's just say they were going down by 6, uh, we wouldn't say I'm subtracting 6, we would say I'm adding negative 6 to get the next term every time. So that's our common difference, uh, so we refer to that as our d value for any of those. Um, so a little explanation here, you can see uh, the pattern of how it's evolving and uh, what's happening as you add 6 every time uh, to get this look that you see here. So we had our first term, which was 19, plus 1 less than the term number times our common difference. Um, and so that explains the formula that you see right here. Uh, the, the good news for this chapter is that the pretty much all the formulas that you would need are in your formula packet. So you definitely want to be familiar with that one for this test, uh, for what's, what's going to be given to you in your formula packet. You just have to know how to apply them, but you don't have to memorize them, which is nice. Uh, so for this one up here above, you know, when, when it comes to finding like the 50th term of the sequence, this could be done without a formula. Most things in this chapter could be done without a formula, uh, but it would might take you a really long time to do it. You you won't you don't want to have to continue to add six on and on and on until you get to the fiftieth term. Uh, it's a lot easier if we have a formula to work with. So you can see for this one right here, um, if I knew the the first term and the common difference, I can plug in any term number I want to get its value. So in this case, if I wanted the 50th term, I would put a 50 right here. And that gives you this look right here. right? And we can quickly get to the 50th term that way, just by using that formula. One really big concept that you got to make sure you understand with this formula is the connection between n and u of n. So n always represents a term number, and u of n is the value of that term. So in the one that we were just talking about, um, if we had a value of 50 right here, so that means the 50th term has a value of whatever. And so this is always connected to this guy right here. Uh, so just another example right here, if we were looking for the 35th term. So again, I just need to identify the first term, the common difference, um, and then I can put any term number I want right here. So in this case, if I'm looking for the 35th term, then I'm going to put a 35 right there. So you can see we have our first term of 15. Our common difference would be whatever is being added to get the next term. Uh, in this case, uh, the numbers are going down by 12. So we would say I am adding negative 12 to get the next term. I think we had a little error on this one. I should say negative 21 uh, in order for this to make more sense. Um, but that way we are always decreasing by 12 to get the next term. A little trick on common differences if you have a hard time seeing what the common difference is. Sometimes when you start using fractions or decimals, uh, it can be a little tougher to identify the common difference. You can always take any term and subtract the previous term to get your common difference. Um, and that would work for any two consecutive terms. So even if I were to say, what is negative 9 minus 3, I get negative 12, which is our common difference. So if we just plug those numbers into the formula, then you get your 35th term. Moving on, this one is asking you for the number of terms. Notice we're still working with the same formula every time. Uh, it's just different wording of the question. Could be a different item within the formula that you're looking for. So in this case, we are looking for n. So we want the number of terms. So we do know that the first term is 6. Uh, so that would go right here for u of 1. That's our first term. Uh, you can see that we are adding 3.5 every time uh, to get the next term. So that is our common difference. We're going to put 3.5. Uh, and like we said earlier, if you weren't sure what that common difference was, take any term, subtract the previous term, and you got your common difference. Uh, in this case, 
we know that we are landing eventually on a value of 97, and so that's what goes into that other side of the equation that you see right here. So we have the value of 97. Uh, remember we said that this number and this number have that connection where whatever this term number is, this is the value of that term. Um, so that's why we would put the 97 right here to figure out which term number we are eventually landing on. And so if we just solve that for n, you can see that we have 27 terms within that sequence. Keep in mind that n is always positive. Uh, you cannot have a negative number of terms. That wouldn't make sense. Uh, nor can you have a partial number of terms. So this must always be a positive integer uh, whenever you're working with n. Another example right here, this one tells us that the second term is 12 and that the fifth term is negative 9. So here's a case where we're missing two important elements. We do not know the first term or the common difference. Uh, and so typically, whenever you have two unknowns, it takes two equations to solve it. So we are creating a system of equations here. So I'm taking this information to start with, and we're going to say that when n is 2, the value is 12. Uh, so if you go back up to our formula, we're saying we have a value of 12 when n is 2. And so we're subbing those in uh, to get the first look that you see here. And then when n is 5, I have a value of negative 9. So if I put my negative 9 in for the value and a term number of 5, then we can get the second look that you see here. But we got two unknowns, so we're just solving a system of equations. Uh, this one is perfect for elimination. If I just subtract everything straight down, uh, then I get 21 right here. My U1s would cancel, and I get negative 3D. So if I just solve this setup right here by dividing both sides by negative 3, then we have our common difference. And if I just take my common difference and plug it back in to either equation, I can get my first term. So now we have our two key elements. I know the common difference. I know the first term. I can now sub those into the formula to find the tenth term, uh, which is ultimately what this question was asking for. Here we get into um, an arithmetic series. Uh, so simply an arithmetic series is whenever you take a sequence and add all the terms together. Uh, so that's the only difference between a sequence and a series uh, is when you have a series, you are finding a sum. Uh, so you kind of want to link sum and series together. So we have our arithmetic pattern that you see here. Um, because of the plus signs, we would refer to it as a series instead of a sequence. So the first term is obviously 19. Uh, this would represent the sum of the first two terms, so s of 2. Uh, here you have the sum of the first three terms, so s of 3, uh, so on and so on. This goes on to an explain a formula that we use, but simply you need to understand that this is a formula that we would use for an arithmetic series. We have two versions of this formula. Uh, there's kind of the short version and the long version. Both of these are in your formula packet. Um, so again, really quick, here's your formula packet. So all this is in there for you uh, within the very first part of the packet. Um, here's the one that we're looking at right now. So here's kind of the long form and the short form. Uh, remember that we said a minute ago there is a connection between n and u of n. So let's just say you wanted to find the sum of the first 10 terms of a sequence. Well, that would make n 10, and this would be the value of the 10th term that you would have right here. Uh, but what if you don't know what the 10th term is? So what if they're asking you for uh, the sum of 10 terms? Um, so we know this would be a 10, but let's just say we don't know what the 10th term is. You can't really use this formula, uh, and that's when the longer version comes into play. Notice that if I were to take, here's u of n. So if I were to take what u of n is equal to and sub it in right there for u of n, I get the longer version, uh, which, is which, which is the one that you would need if you don't know the value of the term number that you're looking for. And so that's when the, the longer form comes into play. So coming back to those formulas, again, you would just apply whichever one makes sense to the one that you're working with. So in this case here, they're asking us for the sum of 25 terms of this sequence. We can recognize a couple things right off the bat. We know the first term is 100. We can see that the common difference is negative 3. Uh, but the one thing that we don't have is this guy. So if I'm looking for the sum of 25 terms, 
I know this would be 25, but I do not know the value of the 25th term. And so that's when we kind of jump over here to the longer format of our formula for help on this one. Um, so we're just plugging in numbers. That's all it is, is just taking a formula. You sub in numbers. Um, and that's what you see right here. And that gives us the sum of 25 terms. Another case over here. Um, here we do know the value, but we don't know the term number. So in this case, if I go to that short formula here, I know the first term. I know the value is 512. That's the last term is one way to look at it. So we got the first term and the last term, but we do not know the number of terms. Um, and so here's another case where it takes using another formula for help. Uh, so if we don't know the number of terms, then we go back to the U of N formula to figure that out. So we got 512 as a value. We have a first term. We have a common difference. So we can solve all this for the term number. We now see that we have 34 terms. So let's go to that short version of the formula. So I got 34 terms. So right here, I got 34 terms. And the value of the 34th term is 512. And so that's what goes in right here. You put your first term right here. And then a little cleanup on that. And we have the sum of all those terms. Moving down here to the last example. Uh, here's just another case. We're still working with the same formulas. Uh, they're just, they present it in a slightly different way. For the last case, they're telling us the sum. We know the sum is 702. And we're supposed to figure out how many terms it would take in order to get a sum of 702. So again, we know a lot of the key elements right here. We know the first term. Uh, we can see our common difference is 13. Uh, so we're, we're kind of picking out all the key information here. Uh, it's just a matter of solving for n in this case. Uh, so we're taking the longer format that we see and plugging in numbers. That's all it is. So we know the sum is 702. So we're plugging that in. Uh, we got our first term of negative 24. We got our common difference of 13. We're just solving for n. Notice in this case, uh, you have two unknowns here. We have an n here, we have an n here, uh, which is what leads us to a slightly harder scenario for solving when you get to this part. Uh, but as you do a little cleanup, and you can walk through the algebra that led us here, uh, but you, you do get to this stage here where we have to solve a quadratic. Uh, you can use a calculator for this. You can. There's some pretty nice features on the calculator. I could show you how to solve a quadratic. If you ever want to come in and ask, I'd be happy to show you how to solve a quadratic on your calculator. Some really nice shortcuts to doing this. One way is the quadratic formula. It always works. Uh, it's, it's in your formula packet. So this is a method that you can use uh, if you ever want to solve a quadratic is that formula. On this one, notice that we get two solutions. Uh, one is positive 13. The other is this guy. Uh, this doesn't work for two reasons. Uh, the main one being that it's negative. Uh, remember, you cannot have a negative number of terms. So right off the bat, this guy just doesn't make sense. So 13 would be the only solution that we would keep. 